Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. However, instead of tackling World War II miniatures, I will instead be focusing on the Cold War Gone Hot game of Team Yankee, and I'll be showing you how to paint a British Chieftain tank by making use of the Vallejo range of paints. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature's surface. For this step, I've chosen to use a black primer as this will create the appearance of shadows in some of those harder to reach areas, like those around the tank's tracks. However, feel free to use whatever color you prefer here. With our primer applied and dried, we can start to apply our base color of bronze green across the whole tank, but before we can apply the paint, we first need to thin it down. This can be achieved by mixing water in with your paint in roughly equal parts water to paint until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. Once your paint has been sufficiently thinned, you can begin to apply it over the surface of the tank. Apply your first layer with a larger brush, allow it to dry, and then apply the mixture again. You can repeat this as many times as you need to achieve a good, smooth starting color, and you shouldn't need to worry about obscuring any details or creating brush marks in your paint job because you've applied the paint too thickly. Now that we have the starting color of the tank, we want to add a little more definition and a quick way to do this is by dry brushing using some Russian uniform. Dry brushing involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint and removing some of the excess onto a tissue or a piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in the bristles. With your dry brush ready, lightly drag it across the whole miniature. You will notice that paint will start to accumulate onto those hard edges, leaving only a thin line of the lighter green of Russian uniform. As you can see, this is a very quick and easy step to perform and will allow us to enhance those details by creating contrast between the lighter and the darker areas. Next up, we will be applying our black camouflage pattern to the hull of our chieftain. To achieve this, we'll be approaching it in two separate steps, and for both of these, we will be using some black wash to apply the camouflage. The first step is to pick out the edges of the black patches using a relatively fine brush and some black wash straight from the bottle. This makes it easy to set up the scheme and to see how the pattern will interact. For a rough guide on where to apply the black patches, just check some Google images or the Flames of War website. Now, using a wash might seem like an odd choice here, but it has two distinct advantages. First of all, it's very fast. The more fluid nature of the washes means you can cover a larger area very quickly and you can achieve those curved edges much more easily due to the smooth flow. Additionally, the wash is semi-translucent. The bronze green base coat is dark enough to allow us to achieve a dark color, but by still being able to see the dry brush highlights applied in the previous step, we remove the need for an additional highlight. So once you're happy with the edges, you can then start to fill in the areas between your lines. You may feel that some areas require a couple of coats to get a good black color, but don't worry. If you can still see some patches, this just adds to the worn nature of the paint job. Now that the main hole colors have been achieved, we can next move on to applying some color to the smaller details. The first of these are the metal track links, and for this, I'll be using flat brown. This brown color will give the tracks a dirty, dusty, and slightly rusted appearance that we can build upon later in the tutorial. Across the tank, there will be several areas of dark metal and rubber. These will include some of the secondary weapons, tow cables, stowage items, rubber track pads, and the rubber trim of the road wheels. We want to apply a base coat of black gray to all of these areas, thinning the paint in the same way as before. This dark gray color will allow us to benefit from a black wash later on, something that a pure black just wouldn't. For the thermal sleeve that is fitted over the barrel of the Chieftain, I'll be using a base coat of khaki grey. As with all of the base coats, remember to employ the thinning and layering techniques that I described early on. Now, once you finish these base coats, I would recommend applying any decals that you want to apply to your tank at this stage before we start to apply the washes. This means that when we apply the wash over the top, it will weather it in the same way as the rest of the vehicle. So with all the base coats completed, we can now start to apply some washes. These are great for adding and boosting the visibility of details as they will flow into the recessed areas and create the appearance of shadows. The first wash we'll be applying in this way is sepia wash, but straight out of the pot, it'll be a little too strong. So we first need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. With your wash thinned, we next want to apply it across the entirety of the armor on our chieftain. Ensure that you have a good even coverage of the wash over the surfaces and don't apply too much at a time. Once dried, you'll find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before and that the tank will have a slightly dirty appearance as well. 
The next wash to apply is black wash, thinned in the same manner as before. This time we will be applying it in two ways. The first is an all over wash and to the black grey details and the tracks. And the second method is a much more localized and targeted application of the wash. Using a fairly small brush, I'll be directly applying some black wash into some of the details on the hull. By darkening down certain details such as hatches, hinges and panels, it will make the shadows look deeper. This will result in the illusion that those details are more pronounced than they actually are, helping to improve the realism of the model. After allowing the washes to dry fully, the model is almost complete. However, we can add some extra detail and weathering to the vehicle in the form of a khaki grey dry brush. By focusing this application around the bottom of the side skirts and the tracks, we help to create the appearance that dust and dirt churned up by the tracks has settled onto these areas of the vehicle. And here we have the completed Chieftain. Now, whilst I focused just on one specific tank in this video, you could easily apply the same colors to other British vehicles in the European theater as well. Now, for this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colors of War book released to accompany Flames of War. It provides in-depth painting guides that covers an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras, and theaters. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for modern history war gamers. You can find a full list of all the paints that I used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to check out my latest videos for Flames of War. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.